flowers in the wild live by nature's mercy. The sun may blaze for several days and dry up all the land. A flower meant for soil will wither in the sand. Or rain ensues in great deluge to wash the ground away. Roots need solid footing or they forget their place. The air may freeze, the ground may shake, the wind howls like wolves. If left alone to face it, a stem may break when pulled. But what of a shelter? To guard those fragile stems, oh, a greenhouse is a bastion between the world and them. A vault of glistening treasures bound by their position, one body thriving in heavenly conditions. Snow may stack against the walls and hail may sting the roof, but life's rhythm beats within like a heart against the ribs, shielded from nature's fists. So here we are together, welcomed by his grace, a greenhouse, a church, a family. This is the meeting place.
that drew me back to your house. Yeah. This prodigal is home now. Oh, this prodigal is home now. Yeah. This child is home, and I celebrate my freedom. This child is home. Once was dead, but now I'm alive. Yes, Lord, you ran to me on so open wide. A worthless earth, redefined. All that is yours now is mine. Oh, this child's home. This child is home.
I'm a child of the Father I know who I am I'm a child of the King I know who I am Say I'm a child of the Father Come on I'm a child of the Father I know I know who I am God we believe this today Come on I'm a child of the Yes Hallelujah I know Say I know who I am I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who I am. I prophesy today that all that are lost, they will be found. My voice declares their freedom now. I prophesy. To heaven's home on this earth Hallelujah Oh, you can praise Him today, hallelujah
Jesus, my closest friend, it's all because of you, our King eternal, it's all because of you. your hands over your heart right now and just in your own words in your own way begin to offer your heart as a sacrifice today to the Lord I won't have another love I won't have another love but you my one love my one love my one love yeah I feel like the Lord's going to minister right now as you place your hands upon your head I just plead the blood of Jesus over your head over your mind. I renounce confusion. I renounce disbelief. I renounce mental sickness. There's freedom by the Spirit. He has no limits. He has no limits. It's all because of you. Join me in saying that. It's all because of you. It's all because of you. Mm, yes. It's all because of you.
together what's the purpose of the meeting place well one of the goals is obviously for us to minister unto the Lord and for the Lord to minister unto us another goal of that is for us to be able to minister one to another but I think the meeting place is a place where we actually grow into the people that God deserves and when we come together in a place like this we yield we yield to him and we yield to each other. And it's a place where we sit under his word. I love what Hebrews says about God's word. God's word is alive and active, which means it's just as powerful today as the moment when it was spoken or the moment when it was written. But there's a little verse in Isaiah 55 that's one of my all-time favorites. It's a gem. Look at verse 11. So is my word 
that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and will achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So when we come together and we gather together in the meeting place, we gain confidence. I see your faith. I hear your sacrifice. I see your yieldedness. I observe your repentance. And I gain confidence that I'm on the right track. We're on the right track. We're all doing that which God has called us to. And I love the confidence that comes from us meeting together and shoring up each other's strengths and weaknesses. But what I really need more than confidence is courage. Because you're gonna leave this place just like me and you're gonna go back to work, back to home, back to your environments. And yes, confidence is well received, but it's the courage that we need. It's the courage to go and to be the salt and the light that God has called us to be. So it's why we sing that incredible song. It fits with 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. We're like living stones. We're all being built into a spiritual house. We're like all individual bricks, all making a great big temple, a great big building to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter two kind of supports that. One was Peter, this is now Paul. We're fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. And we're built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. In other words, it wasn't our idea. We're not the first generation. We're just carrying this on. And Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. And in him, the whole building is being joined together and it rises, I love that, it rises. See, that's the confidence, that's the courage, it rises. It rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. But there's another perk. There's another one. Let's look at Acts 16, verse five. So the churches were strengthened. How were they strengthened? They were coming together, they were gathering together, they were strengthened in faith, and they grew in numbers daily. That's a natural byproduct. When we come together, we gather together, our faith is strengthened, life attracts life, and the byproduct is growth. It's just a natural byproduct. Let's thank God that we are the temple of Him. Father, we come to You praising You. Here we are, Your sons and daughters. And we are your temple, Father. Thank you. We give you glory. May you be glorified today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's by the stripes of Jesus. My mind has peace I claim the stripes of Jesus Fear has no hold on me Sing by the stripes By the stripes of Jesus I am healed Claim the stripes of Jesus, no matter what I feel. So you are here. So Spirit, come and move. Bring heaven to earth. Spirit, come. By the stripes of Jesus, all strongholds go.
to you today, Lord That there is power, power Wonder-working power In the blood of the Lamb yeah, There is power, power There's wonder-working power In the blood Let's release it today so we release power, power, wonder-working power by the blood of the Lamb. We release power, power, wonder-working power by the blood of the Lamb. By the stripes of Jesus. to him say the spirit come and move bring heaven to earth be seated be seated first peter 2 24 he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his stripes, you have been healed. 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 Our healing has been fully secured 2,000 years ago by Christ on the cross. And so when we pray, we don't pray, Jesus, heal me. Rather, we pray, Jesus, we receive the healing that you secured for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. And we praise him for that. So good, so good. So I, I knew sooner or later, college basketball and college soccer would catch up with me. I had a couple of hip injuries in college. And so about five years ago, I got pain in both hips. Hard to run, I would like to run three, four, five miles, and every time I did, I'd have to take two or three days to recover. And so we began to say, Lord, release your healing on my hips. I want you to heal me. I've been healed, so I receive it, just bring it to me. And so two years go by, we do our all church fasts that we always do, the 21 day fast, nothing. Pain every day, every step, but I'm gonna receive my healing. So two full years go by, and this was right at two, two and a half years ago. It was 2.39 in the morning, and I'm fully awake, and I feel some heat. I feel something come on top of my side, and just slowly for 90 seconds, it went all the way down this right side, all the way down to my knee, and I knew at that moment I'd been healed. I knew it, I knew it, and I was. I was completely healed two, two and a half years ago on the right hip. It took me two days to tell Danita. I didn't even know what to say. It never happened to me in my life. It was the first time that I can say, I know I've received a healing. So two days later, I'm saying, Danita, you won't believe it. She says, well, of course I believe it. We've been praying for it for two and a half years. Of course I believe it. But he didn't heal the left hip. And I thought that was odd. And so months go by and still same intense pain in the left hip. And I really can't tell you when he healed my left hip. All I can tell you is one morning I went, this doesn't hurt anymore. 
What happened? And that was two and a half years ago. And to this point, I have had absolutely no pain, no problem, and still at this point in life can run four, five, six miles absolutely pain-free. I give God all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. So what we're gonna do now is have what's called a ministry time. And we're gonna pray for you and pray over you. And what you don't know is before this service, we had about 130 people who said they would be prayer warriors and prayer partners. And we actually anointed them and they're in the room and they were in the other service, but they're gonna pray for you. But you gotta take a step of faith. And your step of faith is if you want some type of physical healing, there's something in you and on you that needs to be physically healed. I'm gonna ask you at this moment to stand up. Courage but confidence. Courage to come. Do you want to be prayed over? Do you want to be receive a healing? Then, then, then stand up. And what I'm going to ask then is the people around you are going to pray for you. They may walk over to you. They may come to you, but they're going to pray for you. And if you're not by anybody who needs a physical healing, pray for physical healing of all the people online. And pray for physical healing for the people who might be around you. And so again, this is a time of ministry where we get to minister one to another and we're asking God to do what he did for us 2,000 years ago on the cross. Lord, we receive our healing. We receive our healing. So let's have a time of ministry and pray for one another. those of you right now who have some type of a relational challenge in your life to stand up. Relational challenge. It could be a relationship, marriage, could be a child, could be with another family member, could be with work. Anybody in, the, in this room that has relational challenges, there's bitterness, there's envy, there's unforgiveness. Anybody wrestling with unforgiveness in the room, please stand up. Any marriage is in trouble, stand up. We will pray for you and we will pray over you in the name of Jesus. challenges, relational issues. May there be forgiveness. May there be freedom. May there be peace. Peace over your family. Peace over your relationships. In Jesus' name, you are set free. In the name of Jesus, we pray over all our family and friends, every relational challenge, every relational issue. We say we're freedom. We come to you, Lord, for healing. Release the healing in us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's your blood is over the door of this house.
right where you stand what you're going through the king of kings on the throne of heaven sees you today he sees what you're going through what you're experiencing and today father we receive what you paid for faith is in you, our faith is in you, Jesus. Our trust is in you, our trust is in you, Jesus. Yes, our hope is in you, our hope is in you, Jesus. It's your wonder-working power. Thank you, Father. Let's just give the Lord a shout of praise in this room today.
your hands with me this morning. As we honor the Spirit of God, we join the angels and the elders and we say this together. Worthy is the Lamb crucified, the one who was and will be worthy is the
Would you lift your voices with me and sing that chorus again to the Lord? Lord, you are my hope, fire. Yes, we worship you, King of Kings. Forever, holy is your name. Jesus, you took my And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men for God from every tribe, every language, every people, and every nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on this earth forever. Father, our Lord and our Savior, we worship you. You are worthy to receive honor, power, wisdom, glory. All of it belongs to you. King Jesus, yours is the kingdom and you are exalted above and over all. We gather today to worship you. So we're growing into the very people that God deserves. And one of the ways that we do that is we take communion together. You noticed how in that last supper, they weren't scattered, they were gathered. They were all gathered together. Jesus didn't go to individual homes and have a sup meal. He brought them all together. I love the greenhouse analogy. I love your agricultural illustration you used earlier about the corns and the beans and the squash. I love the idea of the greenhouse because outside of a greenhouse, it can be raining, storming, fires, thunder, light. I mean, all kinds of messes. But inside the greenhouse, there's life and there's vitality. So when we come into the meeting place, there's a whole lot of confidence in this room that exudes from one to another. And we leave with this amazing courage to go be the church. But it all stems from the cornerstone. It all comes back to honoring Jesus. And so would you take the bread, which represents his body, and remember what he did for you. When I think about the bread, it always makes me feel like I'm getting stronger because bread nutritionally makes you stronger. I just always, always think about the strength that Christ wants to give to you and to me. And it really it doesn't just give me confidence, it gives me courage. But I have to say probably my, my favorite part is the blood because I know that he saved me and you know that he saved you and you know that we didn't deserve anything but he while we were yet sinners Christ came and died for us and he gave his life for us and so the blood is so potent and so powerful and so at this time we honor the one who gave his blood for you so there would be no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who always leads you into victory the one who forgave all of your past, present, and all of your future sins. And so Jesus, we honor you, and we honor what you did by partaking of this in memory of your blood. I'm gonna ask you to stand. We've got one last song. What an honor to worship with you today. Every 
Lord, take this offering today. This has all been for you, King Jesus. Every song, you wrote these songs, Father. And we got to sing them back to you today. Lord, you orchestrated this, this, this perfect day for us as a church, as a body to come before you and give you our worship, to give you our best. So Father, may we never forget the meeting place where we get to meet with you and with each other. Thank you that we are able to gather and worship you, Jesus. We love you, we honor you, and all God's children said, amen. We love you guys. Have a great Sunday.